My name is Freddy Chavez. I'm from the city of Oxnard. I was raised in the city of Oxnard. Uh, came out here to the Valle de San Fernando in the late 70s. I was able to go to school out here at Cal State Northwest Chicano Studies. And I identify as being Chicano, Mexicano, descendant of the original people of this indigenous land. I've been practicing the Mexica tradition through Danza Azteca since the early 90s. But I am also uh, have uh, Shumash heritage. Later on in life, my father was adopted, and later on in life, like probably like the late 90s, we found that uh, his mother was Shumash and Mexicana. And uh, his mother's mother, which would be my great, my biological great grandmother, she was 100% Shumash. There's a lot of Shumash in the county of Ventura, uh, Santa Barbara, all along the coast, going all the way up into like Kern County area. Those are the original caretakers, stewards of the land, original stewards of the land. How, how was it for you growing up, like being identifying as Chicano? And the niches, was it hard for you, like going with all the biases going on back in the days? In the early 70s, I was like probably a freshman in high school, like 71 around there. And uh, that's when the movimiento was taking off. It started taking off like in the mid 60s, late 60s. And it was, it was like in, in its height. And I remember thinking in the early 70s, what is a Chicano, you know? And uh, so I was going to a parochial school and I left and I went to, a, to a, the a public school and, uh, and started looking for, starting, started like that quest for identity. Uh, at the time we're thinking, you know, Chicanos, you know, we're lowriders and we're out there in the neighborhood. That was part of being a Chicano. But also uh, uh, while we were lowriding, while we were out in the neighborhood, while we were hanging out in the barrio, we also had mentors that were involved in the movimiento. And they started uh, mentoring us and, and helping us uh, organize our communities to deal with the youth violence and to deal with the police brutality. So that was like another responsibility that we took upon ourselves of uh, working in our communities and trying to, to make a change. And so my whole life has been to, to, to make a difference, to deal with the racism and the oppression, uh, the injustices that we encounter a lot of times. And sometimes, uh, uh, we find yourself in a very frustrated situation. I mean, sometimes you're so, it's so overwhelming, but once you become rooted in your identity and once you realize I am your descendant of the original caretakers of this indigenous continent, that, make, that creates a shift in your reality because we have our own creation stories. We have, we have civilization that was developed in this hemisphere that they never talk about. And civilization always is, is created when you master agriculture. Once you master agriculture, you, uh, you can start to contemplate and you start to observe the cycles that exist on the earth. And, and you start to contemplate, what am, I, what am I doing here? What am I doing on this planet? What is my purpose? And our ancestors, through observation of the natural, because the natural can teach you a lot if you observe the natural. The world is already perfect. The imperfection is the way men think. That's what throws everything off. But once you understand there's a harmony, there's a perfection, there's a balance, that's all life, that's all creation, that's love, balance, light, then you, re you, you try to figure where do you fit in this what's called the web of life. Because the universe is constantly, constantly providing abundance. And we're living in a system and a society that's creating scarcity. It's an artificial creation of poverty. We, there's no reason why there should be poverty and misery and homelessness in the most powerful, richest country in the history of the world. It's, un, it, it, it's, it's un, Unbelievable, it's like uh, there's, there's, no, there's no reason for that. Only because the concept is based on individual self-centered interest in pursuit of property, of profit. Individual self-centered interest in pursuit of profit. And this whole idea of private property and, 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 and 
private property has more value than a human life. And so that's where we've come to where we are now. When in reality, it's not about rights as an individual. That's the, what, what's come from Europe. They came to this continent with these rights as an individual to be dominant over the land, to be dominant over the people. Our ancestors were not about rights. Our ancestors were about responsibilities. You have your responsibilities to yourself and to those around you. We have a responsibility to an existence of sharing and communalism because it's about abundance, not scarcity. That's, that's, where, that's what it's about. That's, that's how we need to start to live. If you're involved in business and you're starting to make profit, you're not doing it by yourself. There's people around you that are also helping you and supporting you. And as you start to rise with your blessings of profit, everyone around you that's helped you, your suppliers, the people that have supported you in, in getting you to where you are, should also be benefiting from the profit that you're making. So you need to spread that wealth around you. And everybody comes up. That's what I'm talking about. Responsibilities to yourself and responsibility to those around you. What would be your advice for all these youth that are, like say, Chicanos against Chicanos fighting for it? Who is Chicano, who is not, or, or for a piece of land that does not belong? You know, a piece of street and they're killing their own brothers, you know? The divisiveness and, and, and has, has, is coming from the, from the, the original, it's the same mentality that came from the original invader to this land. We were never conquered, we were invaded. The ones that invaded are gonna tell you that they conquered us. And when you're conquered, you no longer exist. I am Chicano, Mexicano, descendant of the Mexica people, descendant of the Chumash people, and we're here. So we're not conquered, we've been invaded. So now we need to start a new narrative. We need to tell each other who we are. And the divisiveness comes from the invader. So the invader created divisions amongst our land. They created countries amongst our continent. The United States, Mexico, Central America, South America. I'm from Guatemala, I'm from Nicaragua, I'm from Mexico, I'm from, you know, Aslan. And, and it's not about divisiveness. It's not about, you know, giving ourselves label and dividing. When I, when, I, when I identified as a Chicano, I also realized because of my grandparents from Mexico and because they were the ones that helped me learn Spanish and my mother, también soy Mexicano. And when I identified as being Chicano and Mexicano, or before Mexico, this was indigenous land. So I am descendant of the original caretakers of the land. That's, that's been my journey. That's been my identity. We are all represented by one color on this continent, and that color is red. We are the descendants of the original people of this indigenous continent from Alaska to the tip of Argentina. This continent is identified as the land of the people of the red, the red people. And our ancestors had a color for the African people, which is black, and the color for the people from Europe, which is white and the color for the people from Asia, which was yellow. Those are the four sacred colors that represent humanity. It's not about race. So it starts with race. There's no such thing as race. We're the people. You start, so those that created race are the ones that created division. And those divisions are being filtered down to our people. That's what's causing the confusion. The Mexica people means we're the original people. The thou the, the, all the indigenous people, when they give you the name of their, of their people, they're basically saying, we're the people. We're the original people. The message, the message that I've come to, that I want to promote, and, and, and I want to create alliances with other brothers and, and sisters that, that we come together, is that, you know, because of, because of poverty and because of scarcity, it's created conditions in our communities that that makes us insane. And, and it's, it's, it doesn't need to be that way. So we need to start healing. We need to start recovering. Poverty causes trauma, man. And trauma causes pain and sorrow. And when you're hurt, you get angry. And we're, we're, we're using this anger amongst each other. And we're lashing out amongst each other. 
And it's all because we were, we are the descendants of the original people of this indigenous continent, and there was an invasion. And, our, and we were disconnected from our lands, from our cultura, from our traditions, from our language, from our ceremonies and our rituals. And because we were disconnected, we were not allowed to speak our language. Our first invader language was Spanish, it was imposed upon us. The second invader language was English, which was imposed upon us. And then we created divisions amongst ourselves, where Mexicanos say, hey, you don't speak Spanish, you're not a Mexican, you know? But that's an invader language. And, and, and uh, you know, we mock the Mexicans that can't speak English, and the Mexicans mock us because we can't speak Spanish. Those are just the divisions that have been created by the invader to keep us, to keep us fighting for the little that they're allowing us to have. It's not about scarcity. The world is about abundance. All this time since this invasion, we've been surviving. We've been surviving trauma. We've been surviving genocide. We've been surviving um, scarcity, uh, trauma, pain, sorrow. And it's time to stop, heal, recover, because I no longer want to just survive. Our ancestors suffered for us so that we could thrive. We need to begin to thrive. That is the message that I want to give our youth. We need to create a world where there's all these different ways of seeing things fits in that world. But it has to be responsibilities to each other and a world where we all flourish. Instead of competing, we need to create abundance. We need to create an economy that's fruitful for everyone around us. That's what's gotta happen and that's what's gonna happen because I'm gonna make it happen. And I'm looking for alliances that'll come with me so that we can figure out how we're gonna make it happen. That's the, that's the message, but the, but, the, but the imagination and the creativity to make this happen is gonna come from our youth. So it's my responsibility to create spaces of imagination and creativity so that we can rise and be great because there is no limit to imagination and creativity. That makes you equivalent to the universe. Yeah. And where could they find you? Where could, like, let's say people want to join to your group or, or reach out to you and speak to you. Oh yeah, Freddy Chavez. Uh, you, we, we have an ensayo here in the city of Vernon. There's a church called Holy Angels Catholic Church of the Death. We just use the space there. We have nothing to do with with the church. We support them in whatever. But it's been a very unique experience working in that church because just imagine if you as a Chicano, Mexicano, or person from person of color, Central America, South America, whatever, just imagine the oppression, the discrimination, the, the being ignored that you go through. Imagine what it's like for people that are deaf. By their own family, they're ignored. So that's been a really interesting experience working with that community because we are, we're using rhythms of the drum to communicate with each other. So we're there every Wednesday night in the city of Vernon, Holy Angels Catholic Church of the Dead on, on Vernon and Santa Fe and uh, at seven o'clock. And every Thursday evening in North Hollywood Park, uh, we're outside right now, seven o'clock. Uh, we are Ajolote. We are a group of Mexica Danzantes. And you're welcome to come and continue this, uh, this movement of uh, energy, danza, song, rhythms, and uh, music that we, we provide for each other. All right. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. You're welcome.